Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Shalom, shalom, child of God. Welcome for today's service. God has been so good to us. We give glory, we give him honor, we give him all adoration for today's. Because seeing a day is not just something that we can take for granted. It has taken its grace for us to see this day. Uh, today I would like us to talk about the love of God. Loving God. You know, Jesus said signs and symptoms of end time will be the love of man will grow cold. And some people have taken it to another level. They don't love even their God, their creator. That's why I would like to dwell on this topic because we need to love God. That is very, uh, our life is about God. God created us for his glory. God created us for his honor. God created us to worship him. God created us to be of, his, of service to him. God created us for his purpose. That's why we need to love God. When we talk about loving God, it's very important for you to grasp, to know that you need to love God. Allow us to go to the scripture. The Bible says in the book of Mark, chapter 12, from verse 28, the Bible says, A teacher of the law was there who had the, the, who had the decision, discussion. He saw that Jesus had given the Sadducees a good answer. So he came to him with a question, which commandment is the most important of all? Question mark. Jesus replied, the most important one is this. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord, with go love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Second, the second most important commandment is this. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no other commandment more important than this. Allow us first to give introduction of who are Sadducees and who are the scribes, the teacher of the law. So the scribes were the copists, were the people who wrote, uh, who transferred the word of God. Yani they are the people who went and elaborated the word of God. There are people who are well equipped, well knowledge to explain the word of God. That's why you find that Herod called for the scribes whenever he wanted elaboration of the word of God. There are people we can say they are, in our modern term, we can say the experts who crafted the constitution. There are people who knew the Mosaic law, the Torah. They are the people who understand it better than the rest of the team. So this man saw how Jesus was answering Question from Sadducees. Who are the Sadducees? These Sadducees, uh, the difference between Pharisees and Sadducees, they were all custodian of the law. Sadducees were the custodian of the written law only. But the Pharisees were the custodian of the written and oral law of the Mosaic law. Another difference between uh, Sadducees and Pharisees, Sadducees, did not believe in resurrection of the dead. They did not believe in miracles. And Pharisees believed in the resurrection of the dead. That's why when Paul was addressing them, he divided them in the middle because he said, I believe in the resurrection. And the Pharisees sided with him. <coughs> I'm sorry. So, the uh, teacher of the law, the scribe, went to Jesus and asked him, which is the greatest commandment? This is a man, remember, is a man who understands the law. This is a man who is, uh, is well versed with the constitution, the law of God. He went to Jesus and asked him, Teacher, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus did not fumble. He went straight and told him, There are two. Love your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. We need to love God. When we love God, it will be easy to love men. When you love God, it will be easy for you to love your spouse. When you love God, it will be easy for you to love other people. It's very important to love 
God. When you love God, God will also love you. When we, uh, we go to the book of Exodus chapter 20, the Ten Commandments, I would like us to understand something there. Uh, when you love God, love is reciprocity. It reciprocates. When you love God, God will love you. Very important for you to understand that. I just want to go to the only the verse that talks about the same what I'm talking about. Exodus chapter 20. Mm -hmm. The Bible is very clear. Aha. Uh -huh. I want us to go to chapter 20, verse 5. The Bible says, Do not bow down to any idol or worship it, because I am the Lord your God. I tolerate no rivals. I bring punishment to those who hate me, and on their descendants down to the third and fourth generation. But I show my love to thousands of generations of those who love me and obey my law. When you hate God, God will reciprocate the hate to the fourth generation. But when you love God, God will reciprocate the love to the thousand generation. When you love God, you are not only loving God for yourself. You are loving God for also your generation. We realize that David loved God and God preserved his generation. When his grandson messed, God said, for the sake of my servant David, I will not take fully all the kingdom. I will give you two kingdoms. Two tribes. Why? Because David loved God. When you love God, God preserves your generation. When you love God, God demonstrates the love by showing good things to your generations. The Bible says a thousand generations. But when you hate God, God will hate your fourth generation. The choice is yours. Do you love God? Jesus asked Simon Peter, do you love me? Uh, the world is in need of the genuine love. What is going around is cosmetic love. People are pretending that they love each other, but yet they hate each other. We have seen now the stories of the suicides is a result of marriages. Majority a result of love gone sour. Why? Because there is somewhere there is someone who was not demonstrating genuine love. You will find that there are people who are, they say that now marriage is one of the ways of dying. Because there the love has grown cold. But when you love God, God will preserve your marriage because through that marriage is what God will use to bless, to love your thousand generation. God wants us to love him. Loving God is something very important. People of the Bible realize the need of loving God. They realize that when you love God, God is going to do something special upon your life. When you love God, God will fight your battles. When you love God, God becomes your older in your life. When you love God, God demonstrates uh, his perfect love upon your life. When you love God, God fights your battles. We remember a servant of God by the name David. When Nabal, David did well to Nabal. He protected them when they were going to share their sheep. But when David was in need, he went to Nabal and requested for food. Nabal abused him. What did happen to Nabal? God is the one who punished Nabal because David loved the Lord. When you love the Lord, God take care of your foes. God take care of your enemies. When you love God, it is very important for believers to love God. When you love God, God preserve your generation. When you love God, God do wonders upon your life. When you love God, you are ready to do anything beyond your powers, beyond your capacity. We know Moses loved God. 
It is not a secret. Moses passionately loved God. Moses loved God. We know the story of Moses. He spent days on the mountains worshiping God. We know Moses is a man who dedicated his life in worshiping God. Moses loved the Lord. We remember Moses was a stammerer, but the love of God in him made him to compose a song for God. When we read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32, we realize that this man, though he was a stammerer, he said, my stammering could not stop me from composing a song to my creator because he loved God. And he went ahead and wrote a song. And the song of Moses is sung in heaven. Angels took the lyrics and they're worshiping God with the song, same song that Moses sang because Moses loved the Lord. When you love the Lord, God makes his promises to come alive in your life. God loved uh, Jacob and Jacob loved the Lord. And God told Jacob that you will not die until you see who? You see your son. So when uh, Joseph appeared, it was a promise of God fulfilled in the life of Jacob. When you love God, God perform, God perfect his promises upon your life. We know the prophetess Anna and Simon, they were very old people, but God made a promise upon their life that you will see the Messiah before you join the world of the dead. And actually, God did it because they love the Lord. When you love the Lord, God performs his promises upon your life. God fulfilled the promises he gave his people because they loved him. When you love God, the promises of long life shall be your portion. When you love God, the promises of good life, the promises of prosperity, because the, word say, the Bible says God takes pride in success of his people. So when you love God, God ensure that whatever he has upon your life, the promises he fulfill upon your life. When you love God, there is nothing you cannot give unto God. When you love God, you remember a servant of God by the name Abraham. Abraham, God told Abraham, I want your son. I want your only son. The son of your inheritance. The son of your old age. The man did not uh, look at his condition. His advanced age. The, ad the advanced age of Sarah. He decided to give the Lord what he wanted. And he was ready to offer his son. Because the man loved the Lord. You know a man called Jephthah. Jephthah told God. When you give me. When you give me the victory, I'm going to give you whatever will come along my way. <coughs> and the Bible says, after defeating the enemies, the first person uh, Jephthah met was the only daughter. But because he had made a promise to God, and because he loved God, he gave away the daughter. Because they loved the Lord. When we shall love the Lord, God will change situation in our lives. The day we shall love the Lord, things will change upon our lives. The day we shall love the Lord, our life will never be the same again. When we make a decision to love the Lord, you have to make a decision, a personal relationship decision to love the Lord. When you love the Lord, you must be ready to walk with him. We know someone called uh, Enoch. Enoch did not see death because Enoch walked with God and you cannot walk with God when you don't love him. When you walk with God, you must ensure that your ways are better, your ways are good. You are someone who is righteous. You are someone who is holy because God is holy. When you want to do Walk with God, you must be someone who is dedicated unto his service. That's why the Bible says that Enoch walked with God until he was no more. 
This man loved the Lord. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they loved the Lord. God did not allow the fire to consume them. Daniel loved the Lord. God did not allow the lion to devour, them, devour him because he loved the Lord. We know the history of them. These people were prayerful. When you love God, you need to love communication with him. When you love your wife, you love your husband, you'll be spending more time talking to them because you love them. You want to share pleasantries. You want to share good memories. You want to share good stories with them because you love them. If you love God, you'll want to communicate to him every day. God loved Adam. That's why God used to have fellowship with Adam. Moses loved God. That's why he loved going to prayers for days, going to just communicate to God, to get revelation of God. When you love God, you'll want to be closer to him. When you are closer to God, God gives you magnificent revelation. In the Bible, and theologians will agree with me, there is an apostle called Apostle of Love. This is John. John loved Jesus more than other apostles. He was closer to God. He's a man that was closer to Jesus. And what happened? God gave him revelation that he did not give other people because this man loved the Lord. The Bible says that he loved the Lord. When you love God, God will give you revelation. God gave John revelation up to the end time. You can say it's called eschatology. The end time events. The man was given revelation. The man was given a ability to understand seven messiah miracles that has never happened in this world. Because the man was closer to God. The man loved the Lord. I will talk about him. How he wrote about love. Why is called the apostle of love? When you love God, there is nothing you can hide from God. When you love God, you will love ecclesia, you will love the gathering of God. You will love the gathering of the people of God. When you love God, you will want the fellowship with him. When you love God, you will want to be associated with the right people. When you love God, you consider the people you work with. You consider your friends. Are they bringing you closer to God? Or are they deviating you from the presence of God? When you love God, you will know that this friend that I have, do they give God glory or they bring disgrace unto God? Yesterday, my heart bled. I felt so bad. There's a, good, there's a man, my neighbor, when you we are moving there, the man loved the Lord. <coughs> Together with the wife, they used to go to church wearing uh, machi machi clothes. They wear the same color of clothes. They go to church as a family. They were people I admire that couple. They love the Lord. But yesterday, I saw the man drunk. The man staggering. The man, the devil has abused, misused a man. The man is wasted. The man that I knew he loved the Lord. He was maybe an official in his church. But because of the wrong company he keeps, the man, what happened to him? The man, uh, salvation, the man abandoned salvation. The people you keep can make you hate God. The company you have can remove you from the presence of God. The people you work with can make you backslide. The people you work with can make you not to love God. The Bible says in the first chapter of the book of Psalms, happy are those who reject the advice of evil people, who, don't, who do not follow the example of sinners, or join those who have no use of God. The Bible here talks about the people we work with. Happy are those 
Other versions say the blessed are those who do, who do not keep the counsel of the wicked or walk in the path of the scornful or delight in the ways of the sinners. You are a child of God. You are keeping a wrong company and you want to love God. It can never happen. If you want to love the Lord, you must be careful to choose friends that love the Lord. You cannot be a child of God and the company you keep are people who do, who do not love God. The Bible here tells, uh, talks about it. People who have no use of God. People who do not love God. Don't keep such company. These words are the words that were derived from the book of Job. When someone, uh, Eliyahu told Job, don't walk with the counsel of the wicked. When you walk with the wicked, they will drown you. When you walk with the wicked, they will make you to backslide. When you want to love God, you should be ready to make sacrifice. It's better to go to heaven with alone than go to hell with your company, with your friends. What will you gain if you keep the wrong friends and you lose your, you, you lose your soul to hell? You have to be careful the people you work with. They can remove you from the presence of God. They can make you hate God. And the Bible here says that when you hate God, God will hate you and will hate the fourth generation because of your action. You have to love God. People made sacrifices in the Bible because they loved God. There are people God told them, like Isaiah, walk three years naked. The man accepted because he loved the Lord. People like uh, Zerubbabel, they were prophets. They were teachers of the law. They were great people. They were uh, priests. They were scribes. They were, all these people were there. But God told a governor, someone who is uh, in his uh, luxurious office, someone with authority, God told him that I want you to build for me a temple. And the man accepted because he loved the Lord. Someone like Osea. In Osea, God told Osea that go and marry an alot. Go and marry a prostitute. But because Osea loved the Lord, he accepted. So when you love the Lord, there is nothing you cannot do for God. When you love God, there is no sacrifice you cannot make. When you love the Lord, there is nothing can hinder you from doing to God. When you love the Lord, you can do absolutely everything that God desires. Abraham did not console the wife. Because God has said, I want your son. He went ahead and sacrificed his son. And God said, no, I know now that you love me. God also wants to know that we love him. God wants us to demonstrate the love. God wants us to take the love to another level. I, currently, there is a story that is going around in social media about a truck that was bought by Sitam. Karen, this track, it has a state of the art a music system, PA, large screen. It is just a confiscated uh, van for evangelism. People are talking about it a lot. But the beauty of it, it is one family that donated that. What happened? They gave 27 million for that track because. They love the Lord. You cannot do such a thing if you don't love the Lord. We have people who have billions, but because they don't love the Lord, they have not done or they have not thought about the kingdom. We see someone like Cornelius. Cornelius loved the Lord. The Bible says that him and his family loved the Lord. What happened? When he prayed, God was pleased with his prayer because it is someone who loved the Lord. When you offer prayer to God and you love him, God accepts your prayer. We need to love God. Believers, we need to love God. God is looking for people who love him. God wants people who love him. 
God wants to walk with people who love him. That's why he asked uh, Simon Peter, do you really love me? Do you love me? God wants us to love him. The day we shall love the Lord, God will do wonders upon our lives. The day we shall make decision to love the Lord, God will change our course. God will change our destiny. God will give us a new song. The very day we shall decide to love the Lord. When you love the Lord, you cannot stay at home when people are worshipping God. When you love the Lord, you cannot avoid worship, uh, fellowship. You are going to, uh, now it is time you are going to uh, maybe stories, football stories, saloon stories, boutique stories. And people are worshipping God. Someone who loves the Lord wants to hear more of God. When you love the Lord, you love to read his word. The Bible says meditate the word of God day and night. That is someone who loves the Lord. When you love the Lord, it will be easy for you to meditate on the word of God day and night. Joshua was told. David has also said in this book of Psalms chapter 1. You meditate the word of God day and night. <coughs> Instead, they find joy, verse 2. Instead, they find joy in obeying the law of the Lord and they study it day and night. This is characteristic of someone who loves the Lord. He study the word of God day and night. He study the word of God day and night. Because from reading the word of God, your faith is built. When you read the word of God, you are established in the word of God. When you read the word of God, you realize and you understand the will of God upon your life. That's why the Bible wants us to love God. When you love God, you will give yourself. Paul says that they gave themselves to us, to God and also to us. When you love the Lord, you will love the messengers of God. In Kenya, there is uh, something called Kat Mogoka. There are so many youths, even women nowadays, are chewing it. The people who are selling these stuffs, they have much respect. Some of them, even they don't pay boda boda. Some of them, even they don't pay what? They don't pay even transportation. When they are at the bus stage, every out want to carry them, want to ferry them to where they are going because they love the product. If you love God, you will love even the people who are offering it. It is time that we should love God. God is looking for them that love him passionately. God is looking for them that are ready to make sacrifice because of their love. Evangelism become easy when people love the Lord. When you love the Lord, you will be quick to tell people about God. When you love the Lord, you will be ready to share the word of God. When you love the Lord, you will be ready to make sacrifice. Some of us, we made great sacrifice. There was a time I was in Qatar. And there, were, there was no fellowship around. And I was approached and told, can you make your accommodation to be a place of worship? It is in an Arab country. And I said, I love the Lord. And I said, bring it on. And we had fellowship in my accommodation. Photos are there, so many of them. People are gathering and people are getting saved in my accommodation. Even that is one of my colleagues who came and told my people that that man will be deported. He has started a church in his accommodation, something that is, uh, is not normal. But because I love the Lord, I decided let me take the risk. When you love the Lord, there is nothing you cannot do to God. I was in radio doing breakfast show. And you know that breakfast show in a secular station uh, involves or entails playing secular songs, having secular uh, conversation. And there was a time it really drowned me. It really made me to be empty. I could not even fast. I could not even pray because I was full of meat. I was full of flesh. I was full of secular. I had to make decision. And I said, enough is enough. 
Let me go now. I cannot continue to do breakfast show. Playing the diamonds, playing the Saudi souls. Yet my soul is getting emptier. The Bible says love the Lord with all your heart. Love the Lord with all your mind. Love him with all your strength. Love him with all your soul. And I said I will not do the breakfast show. Because he's taking me away from the presence of God. So when you love the Lord, you should be ready to make sacrifice. You should be ready to make sacrifice when you love the Lord. Loving God is demonstration. You cannot say I love God and yet you are not de demonstrating. You have to take it further. You must do what God desires from you. You have to be ready to make sacrifice for God. God is looking for them that love him. God wants us to love him passionately, unconditionally. Because God is love. You cannot say I love people, yet you don't love God. You have to love God. I want us to understand this word. I talked about apostle called John, the brother of, Jacob, uh, of James. The man loved the Lord. And when you love the Lord, God sustains you. We know Jacob was the first, uh, James was the first to be martyred. But John, his brother, is the last apostle to see death. Because this man is a man who loved the Lord, so God preserved him longer. When you love God, God will give you long life. God will enable you to see more things. God will enable you to conquer. God will enable you to have new frontiers when you love him. Uh, John is saying in the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 7, he's saying that, dear friends, let us love one another because love comes from God. Uh -huh. Whoever loves is a child of God and knows God. Whoever does not, does not love does not know God, for God is love. God himself is love. So when you love God, you are living in his persona. You are becoming his image. You are becoming the real, direct uh, image and likeness of God. Because God is love. So when you love, when you love him, it is just you are reflecting God. And that is what God desires. He talks about love. We have to love God. Churches, when we love God, God will take us to another level. The nation that love God, God is doing great things in that nation. When we put God first, when we bring people to Christ, when we love God, God will change our course. When you love God, you love your wife. It becomes very easy. When you love God, it becomes very easy serving God. When you love God, it, is, it will become very easy for you to worship God. When you love God, uh, fasting will not be like a punishment. When you love God, worshiping become the obvious, become your lifestyle. When you love God, you become more intimate with him. When you love God, you become more closer to him. When you love God, you become his personal friend. And when you are closer to God, wonders happen in your life. We have to be careful how we relate with God. Because God have emotion. God have emotion. We remember that God says, I'm a jealous God. So God wants us to make him happy. We can make him happy by being closer to him. I would like to invite you today. I know you have been doing something, but you can do better. You have been seeking God. But when you seek him with love, it becomes easy. You have been worshipping God. But when you worship with love, it becomes more juicy and sweeter. I would like to encourage you today. Love God. Because God is love. When you love God, our society will be good. People will not be engaging and indulging in drugs, in prostitution, homosexuality, and other vice. 
By loving God, we'll obey his commandments. By loving God, we'll obey his laws. By loving God, we will be ready to worship him at all times. I would like us to love God. I would like us to make a personal decision of loving God and will never regret. It's the best decision you can ever make, loving God. And loving God cannot be complete without accepting him. When you love God, you accept the work of the cross. When you love God, you accept salvation. Because it starts from salvation. You acknowledge the work that Jesus did. God himself loved the world that he gave Jesus. Whoever believes in Jesus will never perish. What is important is just accepting Jesus as our personal savior. And you now start working with him. And we'll show you how to do things. And God will do great upon our lives. Just love the Lord and let the rest, God will take care of the rest. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we bless your name, we worship your name, we lift your name because your name is above every other name. Lord, while we were still sinners, Christ, you died for us because of love. May you enable us to love each other. May you enable us to love you with all our hearts, with all our mind, with all our soul, and with all our strength, O oh God. Hold our steps. Help us to work with you, O oh Father. Give us favor. Give us divine connection. Increase our strength. Increase our grace. Increase our capacity, O oh Lord. Just as Jabez prayed unto you, that you bless him, enlarge his territory, and remove anything that causes pain. That is our prayer today, O oh Father. May you, O oh King of glory, bless us, O oh God. May you enlarge our territories and remove anything that causes pain, be it in our hearts, be it in our mind, be it in our lives, O oh God. May you bless us, O oh Lord, in the village. Bless us in the city, O oh King of glory. Bless the work of our hands. May you go before us, O oh Jehovah. Give us unity, give us peace, give us joy, because you are worthy of all the praise. You are worthy of all the honor. We worship your name. Holy Spirit, continue to intercede for us. Continue to help us. Continue to be with us. Continue to empower us the way you empower the apostles. There is none like you. Receive all the glory and honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, pray, believing and trusting. Amen. Thank you very much for your time. God has been so good to us. Uh, if you like maybe uh, to know where we are. We are situated at a, a market called Mukuru Kwareli, Mukuru Reli Market. It is just uh, adjacent to Donom Railway Station. By National Serial uh, Board, there at Donom, by there is a market. Just proceed to a room. There is a room number 245. You'll find us there. You can Maybe you would like to communicate with us. Just uh, drop a text or call us. The number is 0725102528. If you would like to see these videos and other videos, just go to YouTube. You'll find these videos, Eric Sublime, Eric of Eric CK, Eric Sublime. You'll find those videos and you'll be blessed. If you'd like maybe to be part of this ministry, maybe to be our partner, you can send your MPSA number. Uh, MPSA number is 0725102528. And you'll be blessing. It will be a blessing to this ministry and God will surely bless you abundantly. I love you with the love of Christ. My name is Sonyango Eric. Bye-bye.